Yeah. So have we got online, uh, neckbeard jazz explosion. I like it. I see what you did there. <laughs> Uh, very good. This is definitely not a neck beard though, because this is on my chin. A neck beard is for the guys that can't grow a beard. This is definitely a beard. Look at look at that. Look at the glory, the glory of that. <laughs> I mean, not that it's deliberate. I have no choice. <laughs> no one can get anything uh, anything cut. Christoph is online. How's it going, man? Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you very much for being a VIP supporter. You, of course, are a VIP supporter. He has that little badge next to his name. There is a join button next to subscribe. You can be a VIP supporter. You get the idea. Uh, I'll do the plug stuff in a second. Maro, how's it going? What's the lowest note Levi can sing? The key of this song, you are absolutely right. Can't go lower than a G. <laughs> Jerry Begonzi Penn, a tonic book is a revelation. I have all of the books here. We will be talking about them shortly. Uh, Stephen's been looking forward to this, fantastic. I'm doing my best to spoil you, aesthetic edgy boy. Really like the volume three Jazz Lines book. It makes me happy that so many people have read some of these books. This is not a Danny Gatton telly. It is just a regular Mexican telecaster that I have modified to be a Danny Gatton telly. And uh, yes, <laughs> let me play a little bit more. As usual, please do share this stream. I'm gonna be playing a lot of guitar in this stream. I'm gonna be talking about guitar. I'm gonna be teaching you a bunch about guitar. People are gonna to wanna to see this. Make sure you share it. Get it on Facebook, get it on Reddit, get it on Twitter, get it on Instagram, get this everywhere. The more people that are here, the longer I'll go for and the more fun we will have. Let me finish up.
I would say that would do. That's probably enough guitar playing for now. Don't worry, we'll be doing plenty more guitar playing. Uh, so Silver Pair of Ducks says, do you Jamie Abbasold? <laughs> um, I have some of the Jamie Abbasold books. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Like, I, I have some of them. Like, obviously, it's a huge catalogue of books. The Abbasold books is a huge, vast catalogue of books. Uh, I'm not going to even pretend that they are close to my favourite books in terms of influence, but they are a great resource. Recommend them. Yeah, check some out. So who else have we got online? So we're talking about volume three. There's a guy, Dan Gantelli. Good man, how are you? I'm doing good, Christoph. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. And this isn't my wisdom. Let me be clear. What we are doing here this evening, normally these are private streams, okay? Normally you wouldn't get to see these. These streams are exclusive study club streams for my study club tier on Patreon. But because of the isolation, because of the lockdown, because of the insanity that is uh, being locked away in the house, I am sharing this publicly. And the idea behind a study club stream is very simple. They're actually for me, <laughs> rather than you guys. The whole point of a study club is super simple. It's about practice. It's, it's about taking some practice material and studying and working, putting in the time and getting better on the instrument, okay? Now, why do I stream this? Well, one, I can call it work then. <laughs> That way I can force myself to practice because it's work. I have to do it. But two, probably a little bit more importantly, it gives you guys, it gives people that, that watch what I do, um, an opportunity to have a, a look at the inner workings of how I go about practicing, how I will take study materials and develop them into my own practice routines. Moustache is getting a little bit out of control. So the focus here should be very much, not just about the content that we're talking about in the books, but also learning about the approach, the, my personal approach to practice, how I'm gonna take the exercises that are presented in the book and develop them into my own practice routine. So that's the point of study club. That's what you would normally get if you were doing the monthly study clubs with me um, on my Patreon. On the note of that, I just wanna say a huge thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. And sorry guys that I'm currently doing a study club uh, publicly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll be doing more, more stuff for you guys, of course. Uh, we've had a few new signups just recently. Yeah, a couple of names I actually need to add to this list. Thank you so much for your kindness and support, guys. It really does mean a lot, especially now I have had a good 70% of my book sales income has disappeared uh, almost overnight. So doing my best to sort of get by and the fact that my Patreon page is there uh, has, Oh, I'm not going to say removed a bunch of worry from me, but it certainly made this massive kick in the balls that we're all going through a little bit easier on me and my family. You know, we are not living a life of luxury, but the Patreon page certainly means that we're not going to starve now. So thank you so much for your kindness, generosity, and support. Uh, if you would like to check me out on Patreon, there is a link in the description. And an extra special thanks to Chris Motes, who is currently one of my top tier patrons. For some reason, he wanted to be extremely generous this month and gave us enough to really make sure that we would be okay. Chris, you are a top geezer. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Everybody, round of applause for Chris Motes. Right, cool. <laughs> I didn't mean to be so sarcastic when I did that. I genuinely mean it. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. 
If you'd also like to check out one of my books, uh, Country Guitar for Beginners, Country, uh, 100 Country Licks for Guitar, the Country Guitar Soloing Techniques, Country Guitar Fingerstyle Method, the Country Guitar Method Compilation, Slide Guitar Soloing Techniques, Delta Blue Slide Guitar, or 100 Slide Licks for Blues Guitar, then I would recommend you head on over to Amazon right now and grab yourself a copy. Because again, daddy's gotta eat. Well, I probably don't have to eat. I'd probably be okay if I didn't eat, but daddy's gotta eat still. Um, my family has to eat, so <laughs> puts food on the table. Thank you very much for allowing me that that second of um, plugging myself. <laughs> but that's what I have to do. Also, want to say a huge thank you to VPix, my friends over at VPix, um, because those guys uh, support my channel and they have done for many years. We have worked together now for about ten years. About ten years I've been playing VPix. All of that playing, of course, was done with my medium pointed. I'm sure if I do this, it will fit very nicely. It's very hard to do this in reverse. There we go, sort of. <laughs> so head on over to VPix and have a look at the work that Vinny does. Vinny's a top guy, I love Vinny to bits, and um, he deserves more attention because he makes an incredible product that I've used for a long time. So that's not a, a paid promotion thing. Again, genuinely love the product, have used it for a very, very long time, uh, and I've, I think that Vinny deserves more of a hand. So I'm happy to uh, happy to wear that badge with honor. VPix, great product, go check it out. So let's have a look at this. Tal, oh, hey Levi, do you have an affiliate link to Amazon or another website where we can purchase the books from you? Thank you for the live, these live streams. Um, I guess I can give you an affiliate link. I'd never really thought about it, but I get a decent royalty on every book that is purchased. So if you want to purchase something on Amazon, um, please do Please do just go right ahead. I, I get a perfectly fine amount. I'm more than happy with my royalties on my books. But if for some reason you want to... Uh, let's do 100 country licks. If I do this, I will create a little affiliate link for you right now. It makes very little difference in the grand scheme of things. I have an Amazon affiliate account, but it doesn't really bring in any money. Um, there is an affiliate link to Amazon to one of my books. If you purchase anything via that link, some will go into my pocket, which is cool. The other thing, actually, I should probably... No, we're not really doing transcribe today, so I won't post the, the transcribe affiliate link. But you get the idea. Right, so um, I'm going to... I tell you what, just before doing the Jerry Bagonzi stuff, just as a heads up for anyone that didn't work out what was going on there, that intro was just me playing over a G7. Resolving to a C. Round and round, so I'm essentially just playing licks that sound like G. And then playing licks that sound like C. You get the idea. And resolving, of course. So that's all that intro was. Nothing particularly flashy, just making sure that I was outlining the chords because I have a lot of fun doing that type of thing. When I pick up the guitar, those are the types of things that I shred, uh, or sorry, shed, <laughs> when I pick up a guitar. What's this? Uh, is the heck satanic book about tri triad pairs? I'm not sure quite what that means, Rob, but but nice try, buddy. <laughs> okay, so today we are going to be talking about the Jerry Bagonzi books. So uh, I'm not sure if, if anyone's familiar with these. I was introduced to these books maybe Jesus, 15 years ago now, um, Sean Baxter talked about these in one of his columns uh, where he was talking about, I've got a fucking guitar stand over there, why don't I just go and get it? Because I'm lazy, that's why. Um, <laughs> Sean Baxter talked about these years and years ago. Let's move that out of the way. Ooh, there's a lot of books. And uh, being a poor student at the time, I didn't have access to these. But of course, it was easy to access pirated versions of them. But now, of course, being a working professional musician that makes his living out of music, um, and especially from selling books, I think it's important that I'm also supporting artists, supporting content creators, uh, supporting authors, supporting publishers, etc. So I own physical copies of all of this stuff. I'm one of those guys now. You know, it's 
this is a business that I run and therefore I should be spending money and putting it back into the industry. So I am doing that. So thank you very much for my Patreon supporters that essentially pay for all of these a while back. <laughs> um, all of my software, you know, I don't pirate any software, don't pirate any plugins, don't pirate any books. Everything is purchased and supporting the artists. You guys supporting me means that I can support other people. So anyway, um, yeah, there are seven books in this Jerry Bagonzi series. Seven books on the Inside Improvisation series. So volume one is the one we'll be looking at today, which is Melodic Structures. These are all published by, uh, is it Advanced Music? Let me just double check that. Yeah, Advanced Music. They don't have, they've got, oh, it is there. It was there on the cover. It's just a little bit hidden. So uh, the Inside Improvisation series, volume one is... Uh, melodic structures. We'll be looking at this one today, so I'll put that out of the way. Volume two, Pentatonics. This is a good book, great book, kind of long book. Um, nowhere near as long as some of the others though, but Pentatonics, that's volume two. Volume three, Jazz Lines. Cool, great book. Volume four, Melodic Rhythms. Volume 5. Thesaurus of Intervallic Melodies. It's a thick one, that. Volume 6. Developing a Jazz Language. And Volume 7. Hexatonics. Hexatonics. Six note scales. So, great books, and as I say, we're gonna be talking about this one, the main one today, uh, well, sorry, not the main one, the first one, um, volume one, Melodic Structures. Now this book bears a lot of similarities to another book that I've done some study clubs on, uh, one of my favorite books ever published, actually, which is the Randy Vincent book, The Cellular Approach. This is an absolutely awesome book. Well, again, like I say, one of my favorite books ever published. Uh, these are very, very similar in terms of the uh, conceptual ideas contained within, though they take slightly different approaches to them. The Randy Vincent one is much more tuned uh, towards guitar, as it's you know, jazz guitar soloing. So it is, all of the licks are notated and fingered for guitar, though it doesn't contain tab. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely aimed at guitar players, whereas Jerry Bagonzi himself is a saxophonist, so this book isn't aimed at guitar players specifically. This You need to be able to do a little bit of reading to get through this one, but certainly not any high level reading, you'll be okay. Um, this is a must own though, just thought I'd mention that because it is a great book. Outside of that, the other book that I will be using today as part of my practice session, of course, will be a copy of the real book, because it's nice if you want to access a different chord progression for a bit of practice, something that's a little bit different, something that you don't usually play over, great resource. So who's online? Oh, this uh, Les Peter Guitar Jam. Good evening, how's it going? Hope everyone is safe and healthy. Cheers from Denmark, how's it going? Yeah, I hope you guys are all doing okay being locked away. I hope everybody is locked away. I hope you are isolating yourself. I hope you're not going out, putting yourselves at risk, putting your families at risk, and putting your wider communities at risk. Keep yourself locked away, look after yourself, and uh, practice some guitar. That's what we're gonna be doing today. Right, let's take a look at this then. Pick up my guitar. Wahaha. -ha. And for anyone that is wondering, uh, guitar-wise, I'm just playing Mexican Fender Telecaster. I love this guitar. It's a dirty little bitch of a guitar. It really is. It's um, it's it's rubbish, <laughs> and that's why I love it. Uh, the action is miles off the fretboard. The neck isn't massively comfortable. It's a Telecaster, so the body isn't particularly comfortable. Um, but it, it's just a it's a workman's instrument, right? The Telecaster is a is a working man's guitar. It's unrefined. It's uh, and this is the height of unrefined, the, the Telecaster. The Telecaster is my favorite guitar. I love the Telecaster. As you can see, I've got some amazing, some really nice instruments all around my studio, but I always lean towards picking this one up. I have no relationship with Fender. I just play this because I like the way this guitar feels and sounds. So cheap guitar, not necessarily the worst thing. I have the Joe Barden pickups in it, which probably help significantly in the way the instrument sounds. That's the Danny Gatton set, of course. I've got this little metal plate here. This doesn't do anything, it's purely aesthetic. Um, this is what Danny had on his 53 telly. It's a dingus mounting plate. He used to mount a, an onboard electrical effects unit onto the guitar, uh, but then years, you know, kept it on years after he stopped using that effects board. And I grew up 
looking at Danny Gatton and seeing this on the back of his telly and just thinking, that looks so cool. I don't know what it is, but I want to have one. So Carson Hess, wonderful Telecaster builder out in the States, he made me one of these plates to go on the guitar and um, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. It, it really is. Most people hate it, but um, it's got these two little mounted uh, screw bits that screw into the body. Um, and I've literally just, yeah, put it on the guitar. It goes on the strap pin. Doesn't do anything, but I like the way it looks. So gives me that Danny Gatton vibe. So that is my guitar. I'm strung up, of course, with some Ernie Balls. I'm running into my Rev uh, Generator 120 amplifier. Oh, the other thing to know, I guess, is my pickup configuration. I switch my control plate round. I don't modify this. This is still my tone pot. I literally just take the control plate and flip it round. Uh, so I have access to my tone control when I'm playing, because I like to... I like to do things, if you listen to guys like Jim Campolongo, he does stuff like that. Um, but he's, of course, he's knobs all the way back there. So he has this very difficult thing to do. So yeah, nice and easy. Um, which last book? None of my books are about triad pairs. None of my books are about triad pairs, Rob. Sorry. So that's my guitar. That's the amplifier. I am running straight into the amplifier using just a splash of reverb. I don't have any effect on other than reverb. I always have reverb on. <laughs> Right, let's take a look at this Bagonzi book. So, just looking at the blurb on the back, Melodic Structures is the first in a series of books which describe a simple and pragmatic approach to improvisation while focusing on the jazz idiom. The techniques discussed are applicable to many styles of music and all instruments, be it rock guitar, jazz saxophone, or the solos of the fusion keyboardist. The system presented in this volume offers a tangible pathway to inside the creative imagination by getting inside harmony, inside the changes. Chord changes are included in C concert, B flat, and E flat instruments. In addition, this book is tran. Uh, in, in addition, this book includes transposed examples for all instruments: C clef, B flat clef, and E flat clef. The accompanying recordings have been designed for use in conjunction with each of the chapter assignments. There are nine tunes for you to play along with, each played at a slow and then medium tempo, featuring Gary Dial on piano. Dave Santoro on bass and Alan Dawson on drums, plus 12 demonstration tracks performed by the author on piano and or tenor saxophone. So, relatively simple. Relatively simple. Um, right, let's dig into it. Oh, <laughs> and I, I made a little post about this on Instagram just recently. Uh, when I looked through the credits on this book, published in 1992, edited by uh, Joe DiMarco, and the musical notation the musical notation for this book, the thing that I do for a living, musical notation for this book was done by a gentleman by the names of by the name of Hans Gruber. So um, for any diehard fans out there, it's it's nice to get a little bit of backstory for what Hans Gruber was um, up to before he decided to knock over Nakatomi Plaza. He was a transcriber, and to be honest, based on the money I make transcribing, I can understand why he would decide to turn to a life of crime. Me trying to be funny. <laughs> uh, introduction, inside improvisation, and this looks very much like uh, the same. Uh, yeah, it's the same as the the blurb. Just talking about how improvisation is an individual expression, and only you can. Uh, sorry, only only you can play you the best. That's actually nice because I, I always say that to my students. You know, they're they're constantly comparing themselves to this guy or that guy. I saw this guy that's better than me, etc. And it's like, well, no, you are already the best you. There is nobody better at being you. So continue to be you, man. Like you, you're good. You're great as you are. So yeah, you are already the best you. And I think learning to improvise is about uh, exploring you, uh, finding your inner music, your inner melodies, your inner rhythms, and developing those rather than imitating other people. So yeah, we'll skip over that introduction. Not massively important. So the first chapter talks about uh, groupings. It's as I say, very much like the um, the Randy Vincent book, The uh, Cellular Method, this is about cells and grouping groupings of cells. Uh, there's a little bit of theory at the start, and immediately I have a bone of contention with the book because the terminology that he uses is he uses a numbering system for scale tones, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which is absolutely fine, but 
when the chord changes to say a dominant seven, he still uses one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, even though in my mind the seventh has been lowered. It's a flat seven, but he will use seven. When he's looking at a minor scale, whereas I would say one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, he just says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when you are using the Bagonzi books, you are having to make sure that when you talk about chords and the numbers in reference to chords, you're referencing the chord that you're playing on rather than just the interval in general. I do feel he contradicts this a little bit because later on in the book, um, he does use uh, flat fives and he does use, you know, and flat nines. So why you would call on an A7 flat nine chord, why, why you would call it flat two in the numbering system rather than just calling it two, because again, the chord that you're using would surely dictate that it's a flat two. But no, you feel the need to specify that it's a flat two in this particular instance, but you don't feel the need to specify when looking at a minor chord that the third is flat. I think it's a bit of an inconsistency, um, and I think it's a shame because it seems like a glaring inconsistency to me, at least. <laughs> Same when I look at the minor seven flat five chord. Uh, he, he says one, fl uh, sorry, one, three, four, flat five. And it's like, well, why not be consistent? One flat, three, four, flat five. Um, that's the only thing that I've taken issue with in the book, though. Aside from that, uh, I, I like the book. I think, it's, I think it's great. So there is some stuff talking about, you know, theory, why, th uh, why these numbers, theoretical explanations, etc. Th uh, three ways to determine dominant chord scales, etc., etc. But here's the key thing, right? The first thing that we are going to learn, the first thing we are going to practice from this book is a 1, 2, 3, 5 permutation of a C major chord. Now, this is actually f functionally this is the first part of a major pentatonic scale, okay? Uh, and when I mentioned um, Sean Baxter's book, so, sorry, Sean Baxter's column for guitar techniques years ago, he's talking about tetrachords. To Sean, what he would mean when he says a tetrachord is he's talking about a cell of notes that spans a fifth. It's a collection of notes that spans a fifth. I know some people talk about tetrachords and they're talking about a four note grouping that spans a fourth. In this instance, Sean would be referring to a grouping that spans a fifth. So each of these melodies that we're going to practice would span a fifth. It's the notes contained within that fifth. So one, two, three, and five. And that's the first thing that we're going to practice. It's relatively easy. Um, in fact, it's very easy. Of course, on the guitar, things become a little bit more complicated. So if I'm doing this in C, our notes would be C, D, E, and G. Now the notes C, D, E, and G can be played in many, many, many ways, right? And this is the first hurdle that you will have to overcome when working from this book. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You've got to get good at hearing that as a melody. Ba 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 ba. You're having to hear that because how we finger that on the guitar will always, or not always, but will often be different. So you are going to want to experiment with fingerings for this, and not find your favourites because you are going to have to play this in lots of different ways. So just for the sake of being able to play lots of different fingerings for this, I'm gonna change it from C, I'm gonna do it in, uh, let's do it in F. So we'd have F, G, A, and C. Now one way that I might play that would be two notes on the A string, and then two notes on the D string. Of course, though, there are lots of other ways to finger that. We could play three notes on the A string. Ba, 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 and then one note on the D string. Ba, da, ba, 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 da, ba, da, da, ba, 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 I mean, actually, from a shred perspective, I will use that fingering if I'm shredding, but not so much when I'm playing jazz lines, but it exists. And of course, the final one, in my mind, would be one note on the A string, two notes on the D, and then one note on the G. So those, th uh, one, two, three, I guess there's four fingerings. One, two, three, four. 
you could, I guess, play four notes on one string. The thing that we're focusing on is just that melodic cell. We should be able to play any note. We should be able to hear that cell. Now, of course, it's just an ascending pentatonic scale. Now you could practice that up and down on the A string, you practice it up and down on the E string, even maybe up and down on the D string. Fingering wise, you're gonna have the same basic ideas. Uh, the nature of the guitar is that you want to practice it starting on every string though, right? Because there are going to be string groupings for this where the fingering will be a little bit different. Now I'm going to keep referencing the intervals when I'm doing this. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, five. That's the melodic cell. So if I do that in G, one, two, three, five. If I do G here, one, two, three, five. If I do G here, one, two, three, five. Maybe I play my G here, one, two, three, five. Play my G here, or here. You want to really get comfortable playing all of these different permutations of one, two, three, five. One, two, three, five. I feel like that's a good time to pause because that's really the first exercise. I don't want to sit here and practice that for hours and hours and hours because I'll be honest, at many times in the last 12, 15 years, I've practiced that. I know those really inside out. They are as a melodic cell, that's something that I don't struggle with. If I'm improvising over the G to C blues thing that I was doing. Now, just obviously I'm really limiting myself to literally playing the cell, which maybe sounds a little bit boring, but it exists, it's something that we can practice. You get the idea. Round and round, one, two, three, five. That should make sense. Once you've practiced that, one, two, three, five, we have to have an equivalent sound, cell, if you like, that we can play on a minor chord. Nice and easy, again, it's just the same first four notes of a minor pentatonic scale this time. One, flat, three, four, five. If I play G minor pentatonic. One, flat, three, four, five. Now we could do the same thing, we could force ourselves to play lots of different permutations of this. So that's our cell, one, flat, three, four, five. Now right there, there is, we, we have enough to practice some basic chord progressions, some very, very simple basic chord progressions. I'm gonna pick a chord progression for us to practice this over. Just these chord changes, okay? I'm gonna grab my real book, because again, it's a nice useful practice tool. I know exactly what I'm gonna go for. <laughs> The least jazz of jazz. It's actually very jazz. But here's where I find out it's not in this real book. I'm sure it's in this real book. Uh, where is it? <laughs> I'm sure this is in this book. 
Ah, oh, there it is. It is in here. Ha ha ha. So, if we take giant steps. Giant steps, the Coltrane classic, right? Using these cells, just using these cells, the major and the minor cell, I'm gonna practice using giant steps as a chord progression. So if I look at the chord changes to giant steps, we've got a B major seven, first chord. First chord, nice and easy, B major seven. Now what I'm gonna do on that is I'm gonna play a B major cell. Now of course the next chord in giant steps is a D seven. Same principle, I'm gonna play my one, two, three, five cell. Next chord is a G major seven. Next chord is a B flat seven. Next chord is an E flat major seven. Next chord is an A minor seven. One flat three four five. Uh, D seven. G major seven. B flat seven. Uh, E flat major seven. F sharp seven. B major seven. Uh, F minor seven. B flat seven. E flat major seven. A minor seven. D seven. G major seven. Now, let me be clear. I appreciate that it doesn't sound hugely musical. That's not the point at this stage. We're gonna look at some more exercises in this book shortly that are going to help us um, expand upon these ideas. Um, and this was a frustration for me absolutely 10 plus years ago. Oh, I wish that was a Guinness, it's not. Um, this was a struggle for me absolutely 10, 15 years ago because I felt that I practiced that enough. I felt that two days of practice on that was enough, right? And it isn't. It simply isn't. You need to be able to play that cell. Ba 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 da 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 da. You have to be able to hear that cell over this chord change, and you need to be able to do it in time to the chord progression, and you need to be able to do it to a reasonable speed. Who's online? So dictum, yeah, does sound like Tennessee Waltz. Uh, YouTube autoplay has been feeding me a lot of Joshua Stefan and Benelli Lachen following the last couple of streams. I'm kind of starting to love it. Awesome. <laughs> Praise Odin. Gypsy jazz is a great way into jazz, man. It really is. Um, yeah, that will certainly sort of open the ear up, if you like. Um, cool. So are we enjoying the stream so far? Please do leave a comment in that comment section. I love engaging with you guys. It makes these streams a lot more fun. This is what study club should be about. I want to be engaging with people. And if you are enjoying the stream, please do share it. Share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, share it on Instagram, share it on Reddit. Get it out there. The more engaging these are, the more fun I have. The more fun I have, the longer I tend to stream for. That's how this works. And the longer I stream for, the more you get out of it. So it's in your interest. Right, so looking at that, what I'm gonna try and do now is I'm, well, I won't try, I'll do it. I'm gonna take that chord progression, giant steps, and I'm just going to play four notes for each of them. So, B major seven, D, G, B flat, E flat, a minor, D7, G7, uh, G major. Oh, it's F7, sorry. Now when I played that, to my ears, it sounded like giant steps in a in its basic form. Um, it's actually very interesting because if you listen to the way that Coltrane himself improvises over giant steps, the amount of times that he plays the melodic cell, ba 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 ba, is a lot. He plays that cell a hell of a lot. Um, a hell of a lot. If I try and play this uh, just ascending, you kind of get like a almost Coltrane-esque vibe to it. If I go... Um, uh, try again. 
uh, B flat. Oh, that works. Yeah, resolve to, to G. That sounds right to my ears, you know? It sounds like we're, we're playing giant steps. So what, like I say, I'm just gonna use my loop pedal. I've got a loop pedal down here. A big part of my practice routine. And I'm gonna loop giant steps. And I will just play around this chord progression nice and slowly, just using this ascending cell. And sometimes I'll make mistakes, but that's okay. I'm just gonna keep reading, keep on top of the chord progression. And it's about seeing the chord that I'm heading to, locating that note on the instrument, and then playing my cell. Ba, 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 ba over each chord. So, chord progression is going to sound like this. D, G, B flat, E flat, A minor, D7, G, B flat, E flat, F sharp, B, F, B flat, E flat, A, D, G, I should say minor really, C sharp minor, F sharp, B, F, B flat, E flat. Now maybe I'll just play alternating bars. So. Let that E flat land in. We'll play. Uh, e flat, sorry. B. F, B flat, E flat. Same again. A. E flat, A minor. Sounded good, sounded like I followed the changes. F to B flat to E flat. A minor, D, G, C sharp. Jerry Bagonzi is a legend here in Boston. I mean, he's a legend everywhere, Anthony. Legend everywhere. His, it, his educational materials are absolutely fantastic. And actually, I should make reference on mymusicmasterclass.net. I think it's .net. My Music Masterclass. They currently have a sale on. You can purchase, uh, I'm not sure of the exact discount, but someone posted in my Facebook group, my Patreon Facebook group, mentioning there was a sale on there. Get yourself a discount. Jerry Bagonzi has some video courses over there. He covers triad pairs. There's lots of cool stuff over there. Go and support Jerry. Go and buy some of his stuff, okay? Support me as well. That's obviously important. <laughs> right, I'm going to bring up my credit screen. Again, huge thank you to Patreon supporters. So we should be on E flat. A minor. D. G. Uh, B flat. B, <laughs> F minor, B flat, uh, A minor, C sharp, I played a different cell in there. Did 
This works, right? My bad. Uh, F minor. I totally balls that up. <laughs> D, G, A. <laughs> you get the idea. Just realised that I left those, that <laughs> credit screen on for much longer than I should have there. <laughs> um, if you would like to check me out on Patreon, link in the description. Uh, where have we gone here? C, F sharp 7 to the B. Yep, cool, fine. F minor. That's not F. And that's an interesting one. What I did there, I didn't really think about it. I, again, I followed the line. Uh, you hear this, but... You start to follow the cell, the ear will just sort of follow the direction. I think when you play this type of thing and you sing along to everything you're playing, uh, things become quite obvious where, where things should go. So let's go again, F. My mistake there. Get the idea. Now, I've just practiced there for just a short period of time. That is the type of thing that I would, I would do for an hour. Maybe an hour is a bit extreme, but <laughs> I'm gonna practice that for as long as possible. And I'm playing, uh, I think, a reasonable speed there, a reasonable speed where my brain can keep up and I can process the information. Um, but still enough where I'm able to take some risks in the things that I'm playing. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying uh, to not f fall into patterns. I know that sounds ridiculous because we're practicing patterns, but I mean the same old tried and tested. I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm... The fingerings that I use, I don't want to use the same fingerings for this. I'm trying to mix up the fingerings for this. So that in itself is a great exercise. It really is a great exercise. And who would have thought it, right? Maybe this is the first time you've ever considered practicing something akin to jazz, right? Um, who would have thought that the first thing that you would practice would be giant steps? Uh, but it's a good tune. It does work for this function because it only contains major and minor chords. And of course, the beauty with these cells is that the minor, one, one flat three four five well it doesn't contain the seventh so this will work over an a minor seven it will work over an a minor six because it doesn't the, the cell doesn't contradict that in any way shape or form it will even work over an a minor major seven don't hear that all that often but it will happen um with the major cell one two three five well this doesn't have the sixth in there, it doesn't have the seventh in there. So this cell, ba 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 ba, will work over an A major seven chord. Ba 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 ba, it will work over an A seven chord. Ba 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 ba, it will even work over an A six chord. Ba 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 ba, this cell will work in each of those contexts. So we don't have to worry so much about the particular chord quality, though of course that comes in time. Make sense? So that's the first exercise and how I would apply that. Now, Jerry himself doesn't do that in the book. He doesn't immediately at that point tell you to go away and practice that particular cell. But that is, like I say, the, the idea here isn't to just say, here's Jerry's book, let me read Jerry's book and we'll just do what Jerry says. It's about, like I think developing and becoming your own player is about, I was always, well, not always, for a very long time in my life, I was completely self-taught. And what I mean when I say self-taught is, 
I didn't sit in a room having never heard any music and I just worked out how to play music. I mean I used resources, but I didn't have a teacher. I would consider Jerry to be one of my teachers because I learned from his books. I would consider Sean Baxter to be one of my teachers because I learned from his columns. I would consider um, Guthrie Govan to be one of my teachers because I studied his, his um, was it called soloing school? Was it called soloing school? It may have been called soloing school, actually. Um, I studied from his columns. Uh, Pete Callard, Martin Taylor, these guys, I've never had private lessons with these guys, but I consider these guys to be my teachers. So to call myself self-taught is a little bit misrepresentative. But the point is, you're using the materials presented and you are, but you're using them in your own way. I'm taking the materials, I'm being intelligent about it, I'm working with the material that he's presenting and then kind of mutating it into my own practice routine, turning it into something that I can use. Like I say, that exercise isn't in the book, but it's a great exercise. I'm not saying that it's missing from the book. Maybe you don't like that exercise. Maybe you take your own exercise and you, uh, your own chord progression, or you write your own chord progression. I don't care. Point is, book, extract information, turn it into your own routine. Make sense? Jesse says he finds these kind of lessons much more helpful and informative than when I was a teenager watching learn how to play like videos where they just go first fit. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Uh, they wouldn't really explain what the notes were or the scales of the song used. It's basically just the video equivalent of tabs. Yeah, it totally was. <laughs> um, it's, it's actually a funny story because when I started working at Lick Library, the reason I started working in there and, and then stayed for a very long, like five years I was working at Lick Library, I was doing all their transcriptions for them because up until the point when I started working there, they didn't provide tabs for anything. And the argument that they made for that is, well, we don't need tabs because we explain things note by note. And it's like, but you don't understand how frustrating that is for most people. <laughs> it's so unbelievably slow. Think how much more content you could get on a video if the players w could refer to transcriptions. You know, if they could, if they didn't need to go in s in such a level of painful detail when looking at these things that they're uh, that they're teaching, and they could uh, brush over things a little bit more, move quickly for a, uh, an idea, and then say, of course, these are in the transcriptions. So I, I do get that. Oh, I just saw Joe Clifford's online. How's it going? Play it with pinch harmonics. <laughs> uh, I don't have enough overdrive on. I don't have any O. If I go... Um... Still not enough overdrive. Let's try channel four. Channel four. Joe, that was just for you. <laughs> um, cool, so let's continue. So that, I like that exercise, I do like that exercise, but I don't think there's enough yet. And neither does, um, neither does Jerry. So <laughs> he points out that these intervals, they don't contradict, I don't even need to look at that, I know what's in the book. They, they don't contradict the major seven chord, they don't contradict the minor seven chord, they don't contradict the dominant seven chord, but what happens if you have to play over a minor seven flat five chord? These chords happen. If you're playing, uh, it's funny, I, I mentioned giant steps and I said, you know, jazz for beginners. Of course it's not for beginners, but the jazz piece everyone knows, it's probably not. The one everyone knows is. A blue bossa. Blue bossa contains a minor seven flat five chord. Minor seven flat fives, super common, super common. Uh, Stella by Starlight starts with an E minor seven flat five. Minor seven flat five chords happen. Now, the melodic cell that we have. Oh, hang on a minute. If I play A minor seven flat five, 
and I sing over the top. Ba 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 ba. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. We have to adjust our cell to fit the chord. So we're gonna have ba 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 ba. It's the same basic cell, but we're hitting a flat five instead of a natural five, or a perfect fifth, I should say. Ba 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 da 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 ba 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Now this is going to present problems. One, flat three, four, flat five. You're going to have to practice your fingerings again. One, flat three, four, flat five. 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 You're going to have all of these slightly different fingerings. But I think the key when you're practicing them is hearing it. Ba 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 da 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 da. Not ba 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 ba. It's ba 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 ba. We have to hear that flat five. It's very important. So that would be one chord that is likely to come up. G. So if we had. Good. Oh, sorry, it's minor. Uh, three, four. It's going to hit that chord progression just a little bit, not as much as I want it to, but we'll address that in a second. And by a second, I mean right now. <laughs> so another sound that I think is very important, Jerry obviously thinks it's very important, is dealing with dominant seven chords with a flat nine. These are super, super important, super important, because if you look back to my mode education video where I'm talking about stacking chords, stacking thirds, stack, 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 stack. One, three, five, seven, that's our dominant chord, nine. Okay, we're getting into extension territory now, and that nine is great, don't get me wrong, love the nine. But the flat nine is just as important a sound because it works to create an altered dominant chord, right, an altered dominant chord. Uh, when I'm looking at, um, yeah, if, I, if I'm playing Blue Bossa, if I go, uh, it's a flat five, let's split them. So C minor. C7 flat 9, it will be online for you to check after the fact minor 7 sharp 5. You need to hit that bell notification icon for my channel though, smash that like button, <laughs> all of that good stuff. Um, it's a shame because I've been practicing giant steps, you'll go back, you'll enjoy the exercise, it's good fun. So with that in mind, well how are we going to play over a 7 flat 9 chord? If I'm playing a blues in A. We'll put one in there, I'll put a seven flat nine in there. What we're gonna need to do is, instead of playing one, two, three, five, we're gonna play one flat two. That's our cell for a seven flat nine chord. So now we have, uh, yeah, it's lovely in blue bossa. So now we, because you have the, simple as just moving that one note, change the quality of the chord, getting sidetracked. So uh, one flat two, three, five. We now have four cells. One, two, three, five is our major sound. One flat three, four, five, that's our minor sound. One flat three four flat five, that's our half diminished sound, minus seven flat five, and one flat two three five, that's our altered dominant chord sound. Now this, this is gonna be enough for us to actually practice. Now uh, Jerry, in his book, 
I think, if memory serves me right, the piece that he gives you to play this over, to practice this over, is blues for Alice. Is that right? Uh, blues for Alice. So if I play these changes to you, you're probably familiar with these. Of course, he doesn't name the tune, but it's blues for Alice. Uh, so he would play these changes. One, two, three, four. That's blues for Alice, right? Um, I don't want to use that, not because there's anything wrong with that, but again, I want you to go and get this book. You go and get this book. He notates the melody through that. Let me just actually play that for you. With that in mind, you know, I can, you, I can just use these cells in order to play over that chord progression. So over an F major, I'm gonna play easy. Over an uh, E minor seven flat five, I'm gonna play over an A7 flat 9, I'm going to play. Over a D minor 7, I'm going to play. Over a G7. Over a C minor, uh, I, I kind of don't want to go. I just feel like it's getting a bit out of hand, so we'll go. And then F7. Then B flat 7. And then we're going to change. We're going to go B flat minor 7. E flat 7. A minor seven, D seven. I can't help myself. That's a cell from the Randy Vincent book. Uh, G. Yeah, um, that's not what he's notated. Let me. I'll stay in the low register. I won't go above the maybe uh, D string. Sean Smith, how's it going, man? I would say a long time no speak. You, you only live around the corner. <laughs> so nice and slow. One, two, three, four. Now on its own, you know, that's not a solo, of course. <laughs> but it's training us to see these little cells. It's training us to visualize the chord progression and to quickly be able to access the information. So with that in mind, now again, this was my problem when I was younger. I would I practiced that chord progression over and over and over and over. But I didn't have the knowledge or the confidence to, to think that I not knew better than Jerry, but understood what Jerry was going for and then could source other ways to practice that. So I practiced it over that chord progression until I wanted to kill myself, which lasted for all of about three days. And then I was bored, right? So. Back to our old friend, the real book. So if you go through the real book, you're gonna find a bunch of tunes that this will be quite appropriate on. One that I would first jump to would maybe be Anthropology. Again, Parker tune. Uh, when I look at the chord changes on this, we've got a B flat six, C minor, F seven, the B flat to the G minor, the two to the five, then we go to the minor, you've got a cycle of fifths, then two, five, uh, one, six, two, five. Then we go back to the start. Now, of course, I'm playing it much slower than you would expect to practice this at. Uh, sorry. Then we got our cycle.
Back to the A section. Then we'd repeat, okay? So Anthropology would be a tune that I would use to practice this on. Uh, do I want to set up? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to loop that chord progression using the looper. Because of course, loopers, good use for practice. One, two, three, four. So B flat, C minor to F. B flat six to G minor to C minor to F. To F minor to B flat, E flat, A flat, D minor, G seven, C minor to F. So we'll go. Yeah, that works there. Uh, Minor, fuck, C, uh, F. Uh, to the D, and I've run out of range to keep going up, so we'll go again. Uh, I, w I keep wanting to play that fucking jazz lines, the, the cellular approach. Changes, D minor. Fuck. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four. completely lost now. F, B flat, E flat, uh, 7, A flat, D minor, G7, C minor, F. Let's go again. Uh, let's play it nice and slow. Mm, slow that right down. Uh, ah, because it's going to 6 chord. It's not a 2. Right. That helps. Uh, so B flat. We're going to C minor. F, B flat, and then we're going to need to go to the G. Now, it feels weird because we're so used to going. Or. Cells like that, but in this instance, because we're going to B flat to G, that's a big jump, so I'd be inclined to keep going up, but I don't want to. I'm going to force myself to go down, so we'd go. which leads us nicely to our C minor, F. So, uh, that cell has helped me get through that, right? Helped me get through it. M Mac 424, now this is where I put my foot in it and say, if you enjoyed this stream, maybe you should be one of my study club supporters over on Patreon, link in the description. You can get access to one of these every month. I do one of these privately for my Patreon uh, study club guys. So let me read through the comments, what have I missed? Came across the Coltrane Pentatonic the other week, trying to figure, someone been watching uh, jazz duets? <laughs> trying to figure out patterns on guitar to learn it. Do you have any experience with it? Yeah, one, two, flat, three, five, six. Uh, works over lots of chords. Someone's definitely been watching the, uh, the jazz duets videos. Um, I mean, sequences, 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 sequences. Uh, Hello Shawnia did that as a plus. If you know anthropology, you know the changes to dozens of other jazz songs as well. Exactly, it's a contrafact. So anthropology would be one that I would use, but there's lots of others. Um, if we looked at 
What, dexterity? <laughs> a boblicity? <laughs> I'm trying, I'm thinking, I'm wanting something that has a, um, a minor 7 flat 5 and somewhere where I can, uh, there's like a minor 2 5 as well. Because if we have minor 2 5, we can do the flat 9 chord progression. Uh, dexterity, yeah, perfect, dexterity. So if we look at dexterity, it's don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a similar tune. It's <laughs> for all intents and purposes, it's the same tune. Um, but the, because the chart specifies a seven flat nine chord, um, there's a little bit more for us to practice. So the first chord is a B flat major, C minor to F seven flat nine, B flat, G seven, C minor, F seven. Then we have B flat to B flat seven, E flat. A flat, and then the same turnaround, but but not because there's a tritone substitution in it. D minor seven, D flat seven, C minor seven, F seven. Now the B section in this tune is almost the same as the last one. It's, it is cycling dominant chords, but they're preceded by their relevant two chord. So rather than being D seven, G seven, we're not doing that here. We have. So there's a tiny little bit more movement in there. But the principle is gonna be exactly the same. I'm gonna force myself, there's only one real difference, right? I'm gonna force myself to play an F7 flat nine. Uh, minus seven chart five, the concept has been Jerry Bagonzi's melodic structures book. Looking at that, and it's cells. We're looking at cellular based playing, melodic cells. Um, so far we have just dealt in, in a tetrachord that deals with the first fifth. Spoilers, the book essentially, it's, a, it's a very clever, it's very clever. It teaches you to practice cells covering the first to the fifth, then you cover cells starting on the fifth. So, but the same basic cells. So you're essentially gonna have the five, the six, the seven, and the two, five, six, seven, and two, which is interesting because you five, six, seven, and two, so it's kind of like a nine sound, kind of like a nine sound. And then you do the same thing, but starting on the nine. So you get nine, three, four and six. So you're getting uh, for each kind of five note grouping as you go through the sort of extensions of tetrachords, if you like, um, you get a little bit more colorful with the sounds and you can use your cells over that. You can practice your cells. Anyway, so dexterity, if I play it again, nice and slow, B flat, C minor, F7 flat nine. Uh, yeah, it's major. There we go. <laughs> Don't want to play. That's definitely definitely wrong. Again, B flat, C minor, and we're actually going to G major rather than G minor. So we go B flat major, G major, C minor. D minor, D flat, C minor, F. Now, not everything is going to work in a cell based approach, right? But it's not the worst. Let's look for another tune. I'm just looking, I'm just using the real book to try and find something that, that works for me. Um, yeah, that would work. Um, we might come back to that one. Dolores would, yeah, that would kind of do the tune. Doing the pig. Always gonna work best on bop tunes because, well, it's a, it's a very bop based approach. <laughs> Um, but also two chords per bar is gonna is gonna work great in the early stages of the practice of your practice for this. Um, what am I thinking? There's a 
There's tons of tunes in here. Fee Fi Fo Fum. I play it on Fee Fi Fo Fum. I mean, it really doesn't matter, does it? I'm just, for some reason, I'm looking for a tune that every I think everybody will know. Um, and it could, it really could be anything. Chances are you probably aren't going to know them. Um, ah, fuck it. Let's let's use one that you that you might not know then. So if I look at the song "For Heaven's Sake," okay, "For Heaven's Sake." If we look at the chords in this, the first chord is a G minor seven flat five. This is a ballad, so it is slow, but we're just using the chord progression as a vehicle to practice. So G minor seven flat five, C seven flat nine, F major seven, D seven flat nine. G7 flat 5, G minor 7 flat 5, sorry, C7 flat 9, F major 7, to an F7, B flat minor 7, A minor 7, to an A flat diminished 7, to a G minor 7, C7, to an F6. Now, if we just use that part, we can absolutely use that for practice. G minor 7, flat 5. Can I play that? Yes. C7, flat 9. Root, flat 2, 3, 5. Cool. F major 7. Then we need to go to D for D7, flat 9. Now, just those chords. Let me just lay those down actually, we'll just use that as a loop. One, two, three, four. Nail on that change. Let's play it down here. Those chord changes. G minor seven flat five, C seven flat nine, F major seven, D seven flat nine. Hitting the changes, sounds good. If we go from there, D seven flat nine, we can then resolve to G minor seven flat five, uh, and then we need to hit C seven flat nine. more notes because sometimes I do that <laughs> uh, but you see what I mean this has been uh, this is a nice chord progression now I don't want this stream to end like that I want you to know that there is a lot more to this there is a lot more to the book so let's pretend that you go and practice that let's pretend you go and practice that for 10 hours um, I'm gonna have some cherry coke and while I do that I'm gonna say a massive thank you to supporters over on patreon Again, if you would like to join me for my study club next month, my private study club next month, uh, there is a link in the description. You'd need to join me at the study club level. But if you don't want to do that, you can get access to my private Facebook group for a dollar, one dollar. Great way to support the channel. If you don't want to do that, you can also head on over to Amazon, check out one of my books. Oh, the Hal Galper book, Ford Motion. That's a that's a good book. That's a good book. Have I have I done a study club on that? I'm sure I remember doing a study club on that. Okay. Right. Okay. So how do we extract more out of this? How do we make our lives more difficult? Or more interesting, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> the answer to that is once you're comfortable with this, we need to practice permutations. So thus far, we've played one, two, three, five. One, two, three, five. Jerry has listed out permutations of one, two, three, five there, and then notated them there. So we can play one, two, three, five, sure, but we can play one, two, five, three, or we can play one, three, two, five, or one, three, five, two, or one, five, two, three, or one, five, three, two. We can play two, one, five, three, two, one, three, five, two, three, one, five, two, three, five, one, two, five, one, three, two, five, three, one, three, one, two, five, three, one, five, two, three, two, one, five, three, two, five, one, three, five, one, two, three, five, two, one. 5123, 5132, 5213, 5231, 5312, 5321. Do you do that twice? That's 5231. 5321, yeah. 
you have a, a shit ton of um, permutations that can be practiced, right? Now, the key is, and I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure Jerry says this in here somewhere. He may or he may not. Yeah, so uh, there's a, a little bit here where he says, don't be overwhelmed by the number of possible permutations. Once you feel comfortable with the basic grouping of one, two, three, five, practicing one or two permutations from each column is sufficient. It isn't necessary to practice all 24 permutations as mastery of a few will enable you to incorporate others into your playing. Right, so cool. Let's just play those, like knowing what we know one, two, three, five. Knowing how to play that on the guitar. Or. Or. We can practice a different permutation. So why don't we take, um, I'll just play them in the order that he's, he's put them in here. So two, one, five, three. Two, one, five, three. So in C, instead of playing one, two, three, five, let's play two, one, five, three. Or maybe if I'm playing up here, I would play. Already, to me, that sounds really cool. Instead of going, going, that's melodic. I do like that. Uh, here's another one: three, five, two, one. Three, five, two, one. So if I stay in that same place, I'm visualizing my C like this: three, five, two, one. wasn't my phone vibrating. Good. <laughs> now that has a melody, three, five, two, one. We also need to be able to do for minor pentatonic, right? So if we were playing C minor, It's worth pointing out three five two one is the in major is the third note of the sequence, the fourth note of the sequence, the second note of the sequence, and then the first note of the sequence. So three five two one in major, three in minor would actually be four five th flat three one. If I played it here. Now the the melody itself. It still spans a fifth. It's just a little bit more interesting to the ear than going. So let's say we take that cell. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring up Guitar Pro so you can um, so you can witness this and maybe you'll have a bit of practice material. So and I would do this. I absolutely would do this. So I am going to start a new file. I'll share a screen with you in a second. Uh, let's get a clean guitar. Cool. Sweet. Uh, now I just want to bring myself up and I want to go like this. Haha, -ha, Guitar Pro. So using what I know, ba 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 da ba ba ba. I'm going to take that sequence, ba 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 ba, and I'm going to put it through. Um, I will use uh, Blues for Alice just because it's here in front of me. So on an F major, 
I'll write it out as I go, right? So ba 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 ba. Here's my F major. And my three, three, five, two to one. That's going to be the melody I'm going to play over F major. So, um, uh, my desktop volume's down. Let me just turn that up. Yeah. So, uh, ba, 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 then the chord changes to an E minor 7 flat 5. That's the same principle. Here would be my E minor 7 flat 5 melody. But I want to play. So my melody now would be ba 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 ba. Correct the end harmonics. I'm gonna zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, I'll put my chords in. So F major seven. Uh, this is an E minor seven flat five. Okay, next chord is an A seven flat nine. So again, if I was playing regular A seven flat nine, boring cell. We now want so we now have uh, actually the jump there doesn't work for me so yeah I'm gonna play it down an octave uh, So we'll play ba 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 ba. I'm actually going to put. Uh, I'm going to add a second track to this. Uh, how do I duplicate track? Duplicate that. Double voice. So on the top is going to be the. I probably don't need the chords on the bottom, do I? <laughs> Give me a second. We'll save this a little bit of space. Um, so on the top is going to be the permutation, the the uh, three five two one. On the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write in the boring one two three five. Mm -hmm. So be like that, and then we would go. Um, mm Let's keep going. Uh, so the next chord is D minor seven to G seven. So after playing, if I was playing boring old D minor, I'd be playing this. Well, we don't want to play that. We're going to go. Uh, I'm going to finger it. Let me do. It's a bit clumsy. Uh, let me play. You could finger it like that. To the G7 melody would be. Now I, I kind of crave the flat uh, nine here. <laughs> Then we've got a C minor seven. And then an F seven. Uh, F seven we'll go try and look for always look for the best way to play it. <laughs> and sometimes there isn't. I don't like going. Oh I'm gonna have to do it. Sounds a bit ham fisted, but we'll do it. Why not? Now, if I just write this in the boring way down here. Uh, we're playing here C minor. Put the unharmonics in there. Ba -ba 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 
do, 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 do. So if I play the the line on the bottom, this is going to outline those changes. I'll put the chords in. Sorry, uh, A seven flat nine, and then D minor seven, and then G seven, and then C minor seven, and then F seven. Right. If I just play the boring changes on the bottom, you have this one, two, three, four. Which is fine, don't get me wrong, like nothing wrong with that. But when I look at the, the version on top, now we have. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to try and make the argument that that sounds better. What I'm going to say is I th actually think they both sound quite clumsy. But isn't that the point, right? To me, these do both sound very clumsy. So how do we get around that? Well, I think the way we get around that is by not forcing ourselves to play the exact same permutation every single fucking time, right? Why don't I play... And then I go... Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I don't like that either. Let's go. Oh, I kind of do want to go up on that. Yeah, so here, instead of playing that, why don't I play ba 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 I'm not sure how, how I feel about the resolution from the A to the D, but it will work. Yeah, it is Blues for Alice. I mentioned that. <laughs> uh, so after playing that, after going ba 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 how do I want to go? Yeah, let's do that. So if I go, um, uh, then we'll go, okay. Now what I've got is a is like a a permutation. Uh, sorry, a, a combination of these permutations. Sometimes doing three five two one, and sometimes doing one two three five. Uh, to me, that that's a little bit more interesting on the ears. Again, if I play it the old boring way, I'll just play that bit down there. I play this over and over and over. Would you go? Which is fine, you know. If I go. Um, It just sounds a little bit boring, right? <laughs> Whereas this version here, now we're sort of weaving through the changes a little bit more. If I go one, two, three, four. Of course, the struggle with this, and I can't stress this enough, is doing this on the guitar sucks. <laughs> if this was a saxophone player, this would be a breeze because playing notes is just a, as simple as playing notes, right? I'm not saying that playing saxophone is easy. Let me be clear on that. Um, I tried playing saxophone myself and even after spending a week of trying to get my embouchure correct, still couldn't do it. So much respect to the saxophone players. Uh, but stuff like this is a pain in the ass on the guitar. It really is. But melodically, this is kind of cool. I like it. I, I genuinely, I think that's quite a cool way of playing through this. And without using the cellular approach to kind of answer, answer minus seven sharp five's question, right? What is the whole principle of these cells compared to targeting notes within arpeggios? I mean, to a degree, this is adding notes within this is targeting arpeggios but the difference is slightly different 
the, there's kind of two main differences. One, these melodies, and they are melodies, I'm using that term deliberately, and that comes on to point two, but I'm using melodies here, and they span a fifth. So melodically, they're not overly complicated. When you target arpeggios, it's easy to go. And suddenly I've played a, a melody that spanned a whole octave, which is a lot, right? Um, a lot of musical information. It's a different approach, you know? Learning this and practicing cells is different to targeting notes of arpeggios because it results in a completely different approach. Now, the second answer to that is focusing on the more meled melodic side of things. The whole point of these is these cells are designed to be melodic. They are designed to be about playing cool lines. They are designed about playing cliches, playing things that people have heard before, playing things that people expect. Uh, you can't play the blues without playing. <laughs> I mean, of course you can, but all these. All of those types of things are cliches. And this... That's cool. I don't like that. Let's try that again. And then we go... Yeah. Just that, playing E minor seven. Let's lay that down. One, two, three, four. Now playing a boring, like, If I play the cell that I just played there, actually I'll play the cell that I've got written, so if I go... Or we go... It works, it's, it's very melodic, right? When I limit myself to arpeggios, or... It's a very different approach. I'll try and limit myself a little bit more than that. That's nice. We found a melody to go for it. Now I promise you, absolutely promise you, that the more you practice these cells, the more you practice these cellular cellular ideas, the more when you're improvising, you'll start stitching these cells together. It's in the same way that like a, a, one of my favourite books for practice and study is the Les Wise book, the Bebop Bible. And the beauty of a book like that is you will learn. You know, that might be a way I play that, maybe. Uh -huh. I'm playing cells there. That's a cell. And then, it's a cell. Cell. So from practicing that bebop bible, I've learned all of these, like, um, if I'm playing like a G7 uh, type, type, type vamp, I might play. Oh, 
That's a cool lick, right? Licks like that. These are all melodic um, ideas. And the whole point of the cellular approach is that you are learning the inherent uh, lines that you hear, the, the inher uh, inherent melodic fragments that you tend to hear in a lot of jazz. Uh, a book that I love is, ah, um, oh, fuck, is it Building a Jazz Vocabulary? It's a Hal Leonard book. Um, uh, yeah, it's called Building a Jazz Vocabulary. Let me double check that, actually. <laughs> I don't have it at hand. Uh, building a jazz vocabulary. Building a jazz vocabulary, yeah, it's called that. So this book, I'll uh, bring it up on screen so you can see it. This is a great book, Building a Jazz Vocabulary. And the thing I really like about this is there is an analysis in here of giant steps, of the piece giant steps. And it, it, it highlights little fragments, little melodic fragments like this. Just as a melody. Ba, 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 ba. And it, it puts that little melodic fragment in the book and then there's a number next to it. And the number is how many times John Coltrane plays that melodic fragment on his solo on Giant Steps, right? And we're not talking once or twice, we're talking like 50 plus times. This is absolutely something that Coltrane practiced. There is no doubt in my mind that these melodic cells are things that Coltrane practiced. When you listen to him improvising on Giant Steps, it is full, full to the brim of melodic cells, these little melodic fragments. And they sound great, so you know, why not, why not practice them? Um, it will help you weave your way through chord changes a lot, a little bit more, maybe, perhaps, a little bit, or not. <laughs> um, okay, how long are we going for? We're going for an hour and 45 minutes, so I, I'm gonna say that's me done for today, but I hope you have enjoyed this stream, guys. Um, why don't I close up? I don't really want to play any more blues, <laughs> that's all I play. <laughs> I mean, I do want to play blues.
<laughs> no. Ah. Ah. Oh, I heard the ending coming, and then I went to play it, and it just disappeared. Uh, it eluded me, as they say. There we go, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you are new to the channel, please, please do make sure you hit that subscribe button. It is a big help. It really is a big help. We're trying to reach new numbers. We're trying to reach new people. I want to spread education. I want to spread blues and jazz and rock and country and slide and all of these things. And you guys help me do that. So if you have enjoyed this, please do share it with a friend. It really does make a difference. Share it with a friend. And if you hate it every second of it, then share it with an enemy at least. Lastly, I want to say a massive, unbelievable thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. Everybody is struggling right now, myself included, and I would be struggling a whole lot fucking more if you generous people hadn't been so kind and generous over this last month. Um, fingers crossed. I'm not as dependent on Patreon as I seem to be right now moving forward. Hopefully work comes back in. Uh, but with, you know, people on isolation, people locked away due to this damn virus... Um, you know, everybody is hurting. Um, so work is, is quiet and that's a shame. Uh, but thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And an extra special thanks to Chris Motes. Chris Motes, you absolutely rock. Chris Motes is a top tier patron. Um, you don't need to be a top tier patron. I don't appreciate. No, hang on. Let me try that again. I don't need everybody to be top tier patrons. <laughs> But if you would like to check me out by the link in the description, support me for as little as $1, you'll get a lot in return. I promise. And finally, please do head on over to Amazon. Have a look for one of my books. I have several out, uh, many books available. Just look for Levi Clay. You will find one of my works. Uh, sales are down about 70% right now. So now would be a good time to sell some books. Because, uh, again, family to pay, roof to keep over our head. Family to pay? I don't pay my family. They're not hired actors. Let me try that again. Family to feed, roof to keep over my head, etc., etc. And they're all Amazon bestsellers. They are popular books. They... I'm going to say this, of course, but they are good. I put a lot of care and attention into them, and you will get a lot out of them. So thank you so much for your time this evening. I hope you have enjoyed yourself. As always, please do spread the word. Spread the word. Thank you for being involved in the comment section. Let's have a look. Oh, sorry. So uh, uh, is that Jurian Kup? Could, I'm sorry for butchering your name, man. Could you maybe list the last few books that you mentioned or any other ones for working on cellular improv? So um, I'll put them in the comments section now. One of them is the uh, the main one that we've looked at today has been the Jerry Bagonzi um, uh, Inside Improvisation Volume 1. That's the first one. My favourite one is Randy Vincent. Uh, it's called... The cellular approach. Uh, of course, the real book. <laughs> and I'm not sure who wrote the Hal Leonard one. I might still have it up. I don't. Uh, I'm sure I can get it though. It's just uh, T. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got it. So this is by Mike Steinel. And the book is called uh, Building a Jazz Vocabulary. Another one that I would that I have made reference to today. I'm trying to think if there's any other books that I've made reference to today. I don't think I have, but you get the idea. Right? That help? Awesome. Uh, Rob, you're very welcome. Uh, Jackson Fender, you're very welcome. Old Fritz, you are very welcome. Chris Locke. Oh, I saw someone mention earlier, why don't you buy yourself a proper jazz guitar? I have one. Uh, it's not here. It's it's in my house. I have a beautiful Gibson Howard Roberts signature. Got the Howard Roberts Fusion. That is a lovely hollow body guitar. Uh, for some reason, it's just not in my studio, though. This is my main guitar. I picked this up more than any other guitar. And, you know, Ted Green played a played a Telecaster. Nothing wrong with playing uh, jazz on a telly. Ed Bickett also played Telecaster on a uh, jazz on a Telecaster. So it's not uncommon to play jazz on a Telecaster. Not uncommon. Um, I like I like the tone of a telly, especially with these Danny Gatton pickups. Uh, thanks for covering these books. You have them all. Great stuff. Excellent, Jonathan Ross. Thank you very much. Um, I'm gl I'm glad you're already supporting the artists. Much love, guys. And I will I'm going to be back tomorrow night for a listening party. I'm not sure what album I'm streaming yet, but please do make sure you are subscribed. You hit those notifications. Hit that bell icon. Uh, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. And I will see you again tomorrow evening as we head in to quarantine day six. <laughs> Much love.
See you soon.